Hello everybody, Neil here again with a quick tutorial, maybe not so quick on this one. Uh, I may actually even break up into a couple parts, but I wanted to put out the video that I put out uh, in reference to a tweet this week about building UI UXs around single page applications. Um, I got a lot of response to this. A lot of people asking me why why do this, how to do it. They've been wanting to do single page applications in Bubble, um, but can't quite find the right mix to be able to do so. For me, multi multi page um, apps, especially when it comes to like a SaaS app, um, I just don't do it. Like I don't really like multi page apps unless the, unless it's something like a a landing page that's linking to a blog or a contact page or something like that, that's fine. That, that's perfectly fine for, for um, something like that. Obviously that's gonna you know start getting into like SEO, things of that nature. But <clears throat> as far as it comes to an actual application, not a website, but an application, which is what Bubble is for, um, single page app, in my opinion, and some may disagree with me, is is the best way to go. And the reason why I say that is there's a few reasons. One, speed. Um, the user experience or the UX is just so much better when a user is navigating in your application and the the screens, which I, I call views, are just snappy. They're just, they're just, you're basically hiding and showing either groups or reusable elements. Um, and that's what I'm gonna kind of cover in this, uh, I guess you could say, mini micro course or tutorial. Um, so speed is a, is a good reason. And then when you build an SPA, a single page application, I, I've learned over the years as I build different little projects and things like that, that keeping your, um, your, your components and your elements and your groups and things organized and contained is very important too. At first, it's not a big deal, but as your application scales and you add more features, a single page application can get very convoluted with all the elements and groups and, and workflows and things of that nature. So I, I like to carve my single page apps up into reusables. Um, you know, reusable obviously for the header, for the navigation system. Uh, and then I actually have been putting reusables uh, for the main body, for the body, the content of the application. So let's say you're, you're showing a dashboard. That dashboard, those graphs and charts would be in one reusable element. And more people are kind of doing this, I think, in Bubble, where they're leveraging the reusable um, feature in Bubble as pages uh, instead of a traditional page. So when you go to create a new page, you actually go create a new reusable, and that's going to act as your page in your single page application. So I, I currently have a video out on my YouTube channel um, that, that, that touches real lightly on this, um, but I, I figured I'd do a more in-depth one because I come across a lot of bubble apps, and, and they're not bad. And if it's an M MVP, I mean, that's all good. Um, but they're, they're clunky and the navigation is just clunky and I can only imagine what's happening under the hood for, for this to all happen. So I want to touch base on how I have been doing it lately with my, my builds and my most recent project that I'm working on. Um, it is by no means perfect. Um, some of you may disagree with me, um, but it works for me. There are still caveats where there are limitations with Bubble where... You know, I got asked this morning uh, by somebody on Twitter that, you know, how do you pass data between two reusable elements and things of that nature. So there are still some complexities that you can run into with this this um, method that I use. Um, but I tend to build with this modular component mindset to where if I'm building out a, a feature set or there's a particular um uh, I guess, set of features that I'm doing in an application, I try to like quiesce those into a view, into one reusable element and do it all in that reusable element. So I'm not having to pass things behind or between reusable uh, elements. There's ways around it. 
You can, you don't have to use the reusable elements as views. You could uh, put all your views, meaning your pages, your reusable pages uh, on the page itself that's containing the entire single page application. And that makes things a little bit easier for you to leverage reusable uh, data and things like that into your, into your views or pages. Um, but again, I try, I try to just self-contain everything in reusables and I have run into some issues where I was like, oh man, I really need to access that from a reusable, but it's very few times, um, that I have to do that. And then I'll talk a little bit also about how to use the navigation with, uh, I've been preaching a lot lately because of Eli, um, Beachy over there. He got me kind of hooked on this is using the path segment as a list uh, instead of URL parameters. There's a couple things you get out of that. You get pretty URLs and you can still um, in your queries leverage those uh, path segments in your URL to um, do things like get retrieve data and things like that. So it's just nicer. There, It's no means a replacement for parameters. Parameters still have very good use cases, um, but as of late, I've been trying to build everything with pretty URLs, no path parameters, um, just using all path segments as a list feature in Bubble, which works really, really good. And um, so I, I recommend that, but there's obviously, you'll run into some issues sometimes with some certain certain things you're trying to do, but it's very rare. Um, so anyways, with that being said, this is kind of the tweet that I put out right here. Stop building bubble apps as multi-page apps. The UX is painful for a user to navigate as transition. Transitions be pain, between pages are slow. Um, think like a traditional developer coder. Most devs these days build SPA single page apps. So where's my, so and then I, you can go read this, but I, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but I, I tend to go into like how developers, traditional developers, meaning those that actually write code, they already have these skill sets where they're thinking about model view controller and segmentation separation of your application. Um, they build very much in a componentized way um, where we think as no code developers in the bubble world, we think of components a little, probably a little bit different than the way a traditional developer does. Um, but essentially, you know, coming down to like blocks of code, right, that are modular that you can you can port those into anywhere in either code or your or your no code application. And I'm a I'm a fan of that. And I'm trying to I'm not all the way there yet, but I'm trying to adopt the that those methodologies that have been proven over years and years and years of traditional coding. How can we adopt those and port them into a no code environment that makes sense with Bubble and Obviously, you know, no code is not, <laughs> it's a, it's a visual development tool. So it's not, you're not writing code. So, but there are some one-to-one -one matches there that you can still uh, leverage those methodologies. So, uh, you know, you can go read this tweet that I put out about it if you haven't yet, but it talks about, you know, containers and modularized code and how I'm trying to adopt those methodologies into bubble. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and, and start um, constructing our application. I'll probably break this up into a couple parts because I've already talked a lot and I'm already almost 10 minutes in. But the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to build our core page that, that holds the single page application, right? And then we'll put the header in and we'll put the navigation in and I'll kind of go through that a little bit. And then we'll kind of in there and then I'll do another, I'll do uh, part two. And then we'll start getting into building the navigational structure and the views and things of that nature. So I've created a just a blank application, free application. You'll see it's only got the index, the 404, the reset, password page, um, et cetera, right? I typically, when I start thinking about building an application, I, I usually use, you know, the build camp methodology with Greg and James and them. Uh, with Flexbox, it's not so much needed now where you have to get so mathematically hardcore it's still good to break your things out maybe into a grid system um, things like that but flexbox is very forgiving to where you can make things very responsive uh, quick note this is also just building for desktop right now this is not this is not addressing any mobile or anything like that um, this will be responsive but down to about tablet size um, when I build a SaaS app that's um, structured like a CRM or something like that, 
I tend to still build the desktop version and then build the mobile version just because of how SaaS apps are structured. Um, if I was building more of a, just like a, an, an easy tool or something like that, my product MakerSocket over at makersocket.com, that's fully responsive down to mobile because it's very simplistic listing site. It doesn't have a left navigation bar and a, and a SaaS like header and things of that nature. So typically when I build a, a big a SaaS app, I'll, I'll, I'll build a separate mobile experience for, for the end user. So this is the index I typically set up with 1280. I do not build on the index page for the main single page application page. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because um, in the URL navigation, Bubble doesn't like that, um, that first path uh, position very much. So you'll see weird things when you're navigating between a single page application where you'll click a navigation button and you'll change the URL path, but then it'll all of a sudden read sasbox.com forward slash index forward slash then your, your path, uh, your segment list path. So it kind of makes the URL look weird because it starts throwing in the index, um, the index text up in your URL. So I don't do that. So typically what I do is I say, okay, well, maybe I'll just leverage this as an MVP. I'll leverage this index page for a landing page. So I never build the actual app on the landing page. Um, you'll see in most of my apps, what I do is I'll go create a new page, add new page, and I'll name it main. This is the main page that we're gonna use for holding the entire single page uh, infrastructure. And since I already set responsive settings on the index, I'll just clone the index. And then now we've got our main page here. And this will, this will contain pretty much everything that we do. All of our reusable views, headers, uh, navigation system, all that stuff, a footer if you need a footer, all that good stuff. So um, right now I got to set up as row. Um, a lot of times I'll just do uh, a line to parent and I'll, and I'll just kind of pin things, but I'm going to leave it as row for now. Um, 1280, I always set it 1280, even my reusable views or page, page views, um, I set it 1280. And then the, the min height really doesn't matter right now. Just give yourself some room to work. Because when you deploy to production, a best practice is uh, to zero out your height in your page. And that prevents all these weird scroll bars and stuff uh, popping up when you don't need a scroll bar in your app. And I'll show you guys that throughout this little tutorial. So 1280, um, I am not going to build the header or navigation from scratch. I'm going to use a pre-built one that I already created um, that... I put in Atomic Fusion where I can just kind of, for, for the sake of this video, speed it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and grab the header here. So I've got this header that I created. And I'm going to paste this. And this is a reusable element. This is how we want to build. So I'm going to paste this. It's going to prompt us to create the new reusable element because that's how I've put it in Atomic Fusion. So we're going to create that. Oops, looks like I did not delete them yet. Let me... Let me delete these. I was trying to stage up for you guys here. My bad. I'm going to delete that. Okay, so now we're clear. Clear canvas, no reusables. I'm going to paste. It's going to create that reusable element. Again, you would be creating your reusable element from scratch unless you have something that you're using maybe from um, frames or um, Atomic Fusion or something like that. So I've got this kind of just fake app that I'm building called Sassbox. Here's my header. It's already set, ready to go. Um, if you go and look at the settings, 1280 on this, um, not a big deal. Um, okay, so let's go back to main and then I'm gonna go back to Atomic Fusion and grab my pre-made collapsed navigation bar. So I'll copy that and I will paste and it's going to create the reusable element for that. And that kind of gets us our two, our header and our left navigation. So I'm gonna go back to the main page. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the header. So let me grab the top nav bar header. Let's put that on there. And I like to clean it up. Let's, let's make these things look real nice here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, these are floating groups, by the way, for a SAS app. I, I love to do floating groups for SAS apps because when you scroll the view, it's nice to keep those headers there while you're going through your other 
items. Um, so let's grab the side nav bar. Let's clean that up in the title. Again, we're practicing getting clean naming conventions and things like that for our app so we can scale. So this is a floating group as well. Let's, so you can notice here that um, it's overlapping. So all we're gonna do on this, we're set up as a row for in, our, in our flex box. So let's go ahead and give this a top margin. I know the height of this is 72 pixels, so I'm gonna give it 72 picks to move that down. So let's go ahead and preview that real quick. Let's take off the debugger. And let's, that looks really nice right there. So, but watch what happens when I scroll up a little too big. See how that, see how that nav bar starts going over the moving up? That shouldn't move, right? That That's stupid. So if you got a user with a, you know, smaller laptop screen or something, they may come in and it may look like this from the get go. So we don't want that, right? So the first thing you wanna do is on this reusable, not in the reusable itself, but on the drop to in reusable, we wanna zero out this height. And then since it's a floating group, we want it to be set to float relative to both because when that screen shrinks, we want a scroll bar to pop up inside this. And I'm not gonna style the scroll bar in there, but you'll see what I mean. So let's go, so we zeroed that out. See how it's still stretching the full page though? That's because I've got this set to both. So it's it's stretching relative. So let's go look at what that looks like now. So you'll notice when I scroll up now, see how that all is nice? And then when I hit right there, it gives me that scroll bar, right? So now we can scroll this navigation over here. I'm not gonna worry about this this button right here, the logout button, but we can definitely do something different with that. But you you get the you get the just there. So now we have our kind of main core structure for the navigation. Um, so yeah, that's that sets us up really nice to start creating our views. So let's go ahead and do that. We can go ahead and do that in this video as well, real quick. So what we're gonna do is what I like to typically do, and people ask me why I do this, is I create an actual floating group inside the body here. And that floating group is gonna contain all of my views which are created out of reusable elements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a floating group and I'm gonna drag this into this body and I'm gonna give it the, I'm gonna clean it up and what I like to do, even though I know I like to keep the element type on that, I actually just call this views, lowercase and views, because this is going to contain all our views, and you'll you'll see kind of why I do this. And then let's give it the let's give it the um, let's go ahead and give it a row as the flex box setup. Let's make it not fixed width. Let's zero this out. We don't want to fit con container. And then let's zero this out as well. Well, let's give us a little room first. Um, actually, let's do, let's do like 600. And then let's go ahead, because I want you to see what I'm doing here. So now we know we need to do a margin, top margin of 72 to bring that down. And then what's the width on this? Um, Let's see here, 82 is the width on this. So now we'll give a left margin of 82 to move that over. And you can see how nice this floating group butts up to these. And then what I will do is uncheck fit height to content so it stretches and it fills the full viewport. And then I'll zero this out now. Now we've got this nice little container over here that can hold our views. So let's create one quick view with really nothing in it. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go create a view now. This is where all of our pages are gonna live. So in this floating group, we are going to be dropping views, reusable elements that we, they are our pages. So let's do add new reusable element and let's just call this, um, let's call this dashboard. And I actually like to do view dash, dashboard so they all in the element tree and the drop down, they all stay kind of together as views. And then we're not gonna clone anything. We're gonna do this one from scratch. 
and then let's go ahead and just make this a row. Again, based on your needs, you can you can set this to container or to column or um, align with parent based on your needs. Um, and then let's do 1280. I always do 1280. And then let's just take this down to 100 for now. Um, a lot of times you're going to do fit to content here on all your stuff. And then let's just grab some text real quick. Call this dashboard. We're not going to style it yet. We just want to know what it is. And then what we're, we're pretty much done with that, what we're going to do is go back to our main, which is our SPA container page. And then we are going to go down to that reusable and this is our first view. We're going to drop it right into that floating group. There you go. Now you have a view in there. So that's our first view or our first page. So I like to get in the habit of calling them views. Um, so what I like to do a lot of times is on this container that holds these views, this, this floating group here. This is the other reason. See how it See how I did that? It, it, it's going to put all your views in this nice little collapsible element tree over here, right? So it, it keeps it nice and organized. Nice and organized is what we like. So what I'm going to do is a lot of times on this floating group that contains all the views is I'll add some padding to it, right? So you don't even have to do the padding in your views. Um, so where are we going to go on here? Let's have a style tied to that. Yeah, I got a style tied to that because it's a new app. So let me take that style off, remove style. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some padding to that. And typically when I do a new app, I go blow out all those styles. Like I don't use them those. I create my styles from scratch. And I'll just do 20 all the way around. See that? So now when we preview this, you're gonna see that view in here. See that right there? But typically, since we're doing views and we're going to have maybe a dashboard, we're going to have set it view settings page, we're going to have, who knows, a view, uh, view listings page, whatever views you want to create, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to say um, this element, this page, this element is not visible on page load and we are going to, oh, excuse me, that was on views. Let me make sure we got the view. We're going to say this is not. Uh, visible on page load, collapse the view when it's hidden because when other views are showing, you don't want that pushing anything down, right? So, and then we're going to, I think we're going to stop there. That's your kind of core layout right there. In the next part, I will get into setting up the navigational structure uh, that starts working with the path segments in the URL up here to hide show those views, okay? So I hope this is helping you guys. I hope you see the next one. I know I talked a lot up front on this, but hopefully we're into the into the weeds a little bit now. And um, you know, I'm looking at maybe partnering with an actual instructor and an actual person that does this type of content for a living, and really going into depth on like how why to structure your app this way, how to envision what you need to get to. Um, she even mentioned talking about a little bit about like you know, MVPs, what's, what's enough, what's not enough, what you should be thinking about without having to um, change that vision of your MVP while you're building, um, things like that. So, but this is more of a quick tutorial to help you guys uh, based on that tweet that's now. So look, look, uh, look for part two. Hopefully I get to maybe do that later today, but it will be coming. This at least stages it up for the next part, which gets into the the, the bolts, the nut and bolts of um, the, the navigational structure. So appreciate you guys.